Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're down at the Math Scientist Lab and uh, I'm going to do a response video uh, for Eric from MakeBe.org. Hi Eric. Uh, he was showing these nice little solid state relays um, and when he was doing PWM he kind of hit a snag um, because PWM doesn't work on AC or it doesn't work very well anyway. So I'm going to try to show how to sync up an Arduino to the AC frequency so you can use a solid state relay for dimming a light. I have no idea if this is going to work because I don't know if this solid state relay is working or if it is even possible. But let's have a look. One odd thing about this solid state relay here was its manufacturing date which is 1977 week 8 this thing is really really old and um, let's see if it still works I'm pretty sure it still works um, I'm going to use the Arduino here um, I plan on using ports 12, 13 at the ground port first of all because it is one of the ports where ground is really close and it's pretty easy to make a cable connecting things and uh, reason number two port number 13 has the onboard LED and uh, it would be nice to see if the board is doing anything even if we don't have any AC things connected um, just for the uh, technology of things what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to find a way to sync up the 240 volts AC that we have here in Germany one sine wave and uh, the solid state relay only switches on when you have a zero crossing so this thing will switch on here stay on and if it's supposed to be switched off at any point supposedly here it will switch off again uh, in order to achieve dimming we have to take the sine wave switch on at the start and keep this thing on for well maybe let's say 50% which would be here and then we would have a 50% duty cycle to achieve this we're going to use a transformer to put the 240 volts down to about 8.5 volts we're going to connect a single diode and then we're going to trim this down a bit And we're going to input this into the Arduino. Yeah, wait, into D12. This is going to be ground. Now, what is going to happen, hopefully, when the power reaches a certain level, the Arduino is going to respond this port has gone to 1 and when it's dropped below that same threshold or somewhere close to it it's going to report the port has gone to 0 we're going to take the time in between and say this is one fourth of the sine wave 
and we're going to subtract whatever is in front of it, which will be one fourth of the sine wave, which is one fourth of um, 20 milliseconds at 50 hertz. And we're going to use that value to set a timer in the Arduino so the Arduino knows when to turn this thing on. And it can turn it off anytime before we've hit the 100% of the sine wave. That's the theory. Let's see if this works. I already have most of the things connected for the uh, solid state relay and uh, so we'll just put this on a simple piece of board Here we go, all done. I hope. So, this here is coming from the power supply, which is a 8.5 volt, 240 volt AC power supply from a modem. This here is going to go to the Arduino. Blue is ground. Pin 13 is um, the enable pin for the solid state relay, which I'm going to put on the connector. And uh, last cable is going to D12, which I'm going to use for the input of the Arduino. Now let's have a look at what the software is supposed to accomplish. Since we have the sine wave, one half of it, input to D12, we actually get one half sine wave for every start of the circle cycle. One half sine wave is in length 10 milliseconds or 10,000 microseconds. from here to here. I'm going to try to set the trigger point so that this triggers actually at half the sine wave. This is a very poor sine wave, I admit it. So half will be around here. We know that this half, okay, half is actually here, 
sorry about that. This is of course one fourth of, one quarter of that and it's two point five my milliseconds, two point five milliseconds or two thousand five hundred microseconds. So what the software will do, it will have a timer which will go in a loop and that loop will check for this thing. If this happens, if D12 is 1 and we're going to set the timer to 2500. And we're going to continue the timer loop for a whole set. Every time this is reset, we will call the timer 2500. It will then increment. We will use the millis or the micros uh, method to acquire the changes and to actually set a threshold for triggering the solid state relay. If we have the complete sine wave we can actually latch the solid state relay a little before we're going through the zero crossing which will take away some part of the 100% setting that we're getting. But we can make sure that we have a good latch at this point. We can then turn it off at the earliest a few microseconds after the zero crossing, which will take away another small percentage. So our duty cycle will be somewhere between about 10% to about 90% of the full sine wave which will give us about 10 to 90% of uh, maximum luminosity of a light bulb. This should be good enough for a dimmer. It should also be good enough for, I don't know, maybe maybe um, a big halogen lamp. This will not work with a motor because if you want to control a motor you actually have to give it a full sine wave and then take away a few. Um, this works different just to make this clear. Um, let's try it out in software. Okay, I finished putting everything together I wrote a small program that uh, does nothing more than examine the input that is coming from the transformer and according to that it starts or it keeps the time for the uh, 50 Hertz pilot that we need to turn the solid state relay on and off and what you're seeing here the upper waveform is uh, what is coming in from the transformer. Um, the lower waveform is what is going out to the uh, solid state relay. And as you can see, um, the synchronization is quite good. You can see that I have a little bit of preload on the solid state relay to make sure that it turns on at the next zero crossing and you can also see that I've got a duty cycle set of about 50% of the first wave which is about 20% of all power. Um, if I reset this you can also see that for three seconds it's going to turn the light on completely so we can have a look at the difference of lighting and then it will start dimming the light. 
what this looks like in real life sorry, is like this. And this is the dimmed light. Let's turn it on. This is 100%. This is 25%. The camera is actually messing a bit with it. Um, there's a little flicker, um, which is to be expected. But apart from that, it works perfectly. And I think it proves my point that you can use these things for a dimmer if you synchronize them to your AC waveform and it'll work perfectly. Thanks for watching, bye bye!